What's up everyone? My name is Kaluluwin and I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. And today I'm gonna show you guys how to code stuff. So the first thing that you want to do is create some good chords that sound full and just really nice. After you guys have your chords, we're gonna start off with the first layer of the chord stack, and it is the super saw. And I'm using Serum, but you guys don't have to use Serum. You can use any other VST plugin. And I know like a lot of people say you need like Silent or Spire to like make good chords and super saws and stuff like that. But you can just use really any VST and it will work just fine. So we're just going to want to turn up the unison for the super saw to around 8 to 16. And the unison is also called Voices on Silence just for you guys who are new to sound design. So if you guys want a more centered super saw, what you want to do is set it to an odd number of voicings. Because as you can see, there's one green signal in the middle and that's what's going to make it a little bit more centered. Now if you want it a little bit more wide, you can go ahead and put it onto an even amount of voicings. And as you guys can see, there are two green signals in the middle, but they're not directly in the middle, so they're a little bit to the side. So after you guys have the unison done, I'm going to put the attunement to like around in the middle. And for the oscillator B, we're going to also put it to around 8 to 16 voicings. And I'm just going to turn the attunement down about right there. So after you guys have that done, we're going to go and turn on multiband compressor. Now if you guys are on silent and you guys don't have this option, you can just put on an OTT after when you process. So we're just going to paste down the chords right there. And moving on to the second layer of the super saw, we're going to create a more narrow kind of super saw or saw. And we're going to just turn up the unison to around 7. And I'm going to turn the attunement down by a lot. I'm also going to turn on multiband compressor for this. But once again, if you guys don't have the multiband compressor option, you can just put on OTT later. And the last layer, which is the reverb saw picture. And if you guys don't know how to make this, Deli FB made a really good tutorial on how to make this kind of sound. So if you guys don't know how to do it and you want to, just go ahead and click the link in the description. So I'm just going to put it on the top notes. So for the bass, we're going to take the bottom notes and get two layers and the first layer is going to be a sub bass so we're just going to use our good old pal 3x oscillator we're just going to turn on the course pitch for all of them and put the sub bass there so if i play you guys a sub bass right now you probably won't be able to hear it but we're going to fix that later next we're going to create a dirty saw bass and what we're going to do is open up your vst and i'm just going to lower the octave put the saw wave down by one and turn on the noise oscillator and just kind of balance the two now I'm going to turn on distortion and multiband compressor. I just want to balance the volumes a little bit. That's, that's pretty good and I'm just going to put it right there as well. And here's just an extra gritty bass. So now we're going to go ahead and process these sounds. So go ahead and drop all of these into your mixer bus. And I'm going to create a sub mix for the super saws and the basses. Now I'm just going to go ahead and route all these into the sub mix. And let's go ahead and start off with the saw wave. So we're going to solo this and just have a listen real quick. So I'm going to put on another OTT. And I'm going to put it around 30%. I think it's pretty good. Now let's go ahead and get an EQ and look at the frequency. We're going to cut off the bass around right here. And now we're just going to go and look for some muddy spots or spots that we don't want. So... So a quick tip, if you guys feel like your super saws aren't bright enough, you can just go ahead and boost the high end a little bit. So uh, I think that's pretty good for the first saw. Now we're going to move on to the second saw and have a listen to this one. All 
Alright, so I'm gonna also put on an OTT for this. I put it near 50% and we're gonna grab an EQ. And let's go ahead and look for some spots again. So this one has a little bit more of a body, so I'm going to kind of boost some of the mids. That's some good high end, so I'll also boost that a little bit. So uh, I think that's pretty good for the second saw. Now we're going to move on to the saw pitcher. So I'm not going to really put an OTT on that one. I'm just going to boost the highs a little bit. So it's pretty good for the super saws. And I'm going to move on to the dirty saw base. So let's have a listen to that as well. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and saturate this a little bit with Fruity Fastness. So I think that's pretty good. Now we're going to grab an EQ and look at this. So I'm going to boost the base area a little bit and lower the high end. So that's my EQ, now we're gonna compress it a little bit. Alright, so that's pretty good as well. Now we're gonna move on to the gritty bass. I'm gonna put an OTT onto this. And some distortion. And then we have the EQ, and this is... So for the sub bass, we're going to want to bring out more harmonics, higher harmonics, because on smaller devices, you probably can't hear the sub bass as well. So we're going to want to distort it or saturate it. So I'm going to use Fruity Wave Shaper. By distorting it, or saturating it, it's going to bring out some of the higher harmonics. If we look at the EQ right here, without the Wave Shaper, it looks like this. It's just a singular sub bass. And if you put on the distortion or saturation, you guys can see that it's going to start to bring out more harmonics. As you guys can see right here, it's starting to bring out more higher harmonics. So that's just one way to kind of make the sub bass a little bit suitable for smaller devices. And after you guys have saturated, you can just do some basic EQ and boost some of the sub. And that's just going to make it a little bit better. So now we're just going to balance out all of the sounds real quick. So after that, we're just going to put on a limiter onto the submixes to kind of boost the volumes a little bit and kind of not make them clip. That's a little bit better now than before. And for this one, we're going to also do the same. And we'll also put on a reverb for the saws. So after you guys have it all done, it could sound something like this now. So that is it. And that's basically how I chord stack. So if you guys did enjoy this video or found it useful, Please go ahead and subscribe and share this video with anyone you think it might help. And if you guys have anything that you guys want me to cover, go ahead and just tell me in the description and I'll try my best to create it. But uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching. And have a good one.